Good evening, and welcome to the parent presentation for the reopening five days a week of in-person instruction for the middle school and high school. Switch to my presentation. We'll go ahead and get started for tonight. So for, uh, tonight's agenda for this presentation is to detail the updated reopening plan for Monday, May 24th. We'll review the frequently asked questions at the end of the presentation, which will be updated and posted on the district website by Friday, May 21st, along with the recording of this presentation. You can submit additional questions via the Thought Exchange link so that they can be added to the FAQ document and posted on our website at www.thepewschools.org. Here is the um, QR code that you can use, you can, that you can um, uh, access with your device, handheld device, and answering uh, the question based on the information presented in this forum on the updated reopening plan, what additional questions might you have? And again, this exchange will uh, close tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. so that we can compile that FAQ. So we, we started back in August with providing information um, and understanding the pandemic at that time and, and helping um, parents make an informed decision on how to move forward. And our top priority has been and always will be the safety and well-being of our students and the entire DePue family. At the same time, we are focused on fulfilling our core mission and commitment to the students at DePue and their education. Back in August, we talked about this particular graphic, focusing on the health and safety of our DePue family and, and student learning. And we knew that uh, our health and safety would be 100% um, protected if we stayed in remote learning. However, the engagement with student learning would be significantly diminished. And to the right of the graphic, having students 100% in-person learning, the health and safety could be jeopardized, but we know, know, we know that uh, students are most engaged in that environment. So we designed a um, hybrid learning model uh, to start the school year. And now we're at this point, I know there's only about six weeks of school left, but we're now at this point where we can shift uh, back to that 100% of in-person learning and still offer the remote uh, learning model. As of Thursday, April 15th, uh, the, uh, when we set out our parent intent survey, uh, uh, intent survey, with the middle school and high school students, we had 925 students identified from that survey, 198, uh, or 21% of the students chose to stay in full remote learning, and 727, or 79%, chose to come back to school five days a week for in-person learning. So how did we get here? We go back to February 5th. Uh, that was the end of the first semester, beginning of the second semester, and our um, goal was to resurvey our parents and ask them what has been working well in the learning environment and where we need more support. And one of the predominant themes throughout the thought exchange was all about bringing kids back full time. From kindergarten through 12th grade, parents and, and students alike uh, wanted to be back in school full time. And certainly, as educators, we wanted the students back full time. So one of the things that needed to have ha ha uh, happen was the regulations needed to change to allow us to be able to bring students back full time. Initially, we thought the New York State Department of Health would be issuing that guidance first. However, we were surprised. And on March 19th, the CDC updated their guidance first, which allowed for physical distancing to move from six feet to three feet with conditions. Immediately, we sent out that parent intent survey. And like I mentioned, 79% of the middle school and high school students want to come back uh, to five days a week of in-person learning and 21% want to switch to or stay in remote learning. Then on uh, March 22nd, the administrative uh, conversations, administrative conversations commence with building level leadership teams to review the um, updated guidance uh, regulations and uh, began to identify accommodations that needed to happen within our buildings. Then on April 9th, uh, on a Friday afternoon at 5.30 p.m., uh, the New York State Department of Health released their guidance uh, which allowed us to move forward with our shift to in-person uh, learning five days a week, uh, which uh, supported the CDC guidance regarding uh, physical distancing. On April 12th, the following Monday, the district announced its commitment to fully reopening uh, Cuba Heights Elementary to five days a week um, as of April 19th, the following Monday. On April 19th, we successfully reopened Cuba Heights to five days 
of in-person instruction. And then we waited to see about the positivity rates so that we could bring back our middle school and high school students because one of the conditions was that if we weren't cohorting our students, um, we would not be able to reduce that distance from six feet to three feet. So we had to wait for the positivity rate to drop. Um, and as of uh, May 13th, it did drop. Um, and we were able to announce on May 14th, the district would be reopening its middle school and high school to five days of a week of in-person instruction for this upcoming Monday, May 24th. So some of the key things within that guidance, districts may choose to reduce physical distancing to no less than three feet between students during academic instruction. However, districts must follow CDC recommendations for physical distancing depending on community transmission rates and grade levels. And that's where the middle school and high school come into play because of the fact that they're non-cohorted. We had to wait for those positivity rates to fall. Schools must adhere to the exceptions where a minimum of six feet of distance must be maintained, including six feet is always the required distancing between adults and between students and adults. Six feet of distance is required when eating meals or snacks or drinking or other times masks must be removed, such as mask breaks. This may mean that meals cannot be eaten in classrooms that have been converted to three feet of physical distance during instruction time, unless seating assignments allow for six feet of distance. And I'll review that in a second. Uh, individuals participating in activities that require you projecting the voice, for instance, a chorus, or playing a in, uh, wind instrument must be six feet apart, and there must be six feet of distance between the performers and the audience during performances and concerts. Six feet of physical distance must be maintained in common areas and outside of classrooms uh, where possible. And all districts, and the CDC reaffirmed this earlier in the week, must have a mandatory face mask uh, policy, which we do. Some of the indicators that were in the regulations due to, the, due to evidence that transmission risk ranges by the age of the student. Again, the CDC recommended that physical distancing requirements differ by grade level and community transmission risk. That's why the middle school and high school had to wait for those positivity rates to fall. And they developed four levels of indicators and thresholds for that community transmission. We were in the far right, the high transmission red area, uh, but we are now in the substantial transmission orange, which if we go down to the middle school and high schools, physical distancing at least three feet of distance between students and classrooms, cohorting is recommended when possible. Uh, we do have some situations where we do have cohorting, uh, however, it's not predominant. And as of today, the positivity rate is at 1.4%, very low. Parents, by sending your children to school each day, this is a continuation. You are confirming that you have completed a daily home health screening. If you are unable to complete a full screening at home, please contact your school nurse so arrangements can be made at school. In addition, every individual still entering the building uh, will be required to have their temperature checked. Uh, again, some uh, changes to our facilities. Tables have been, for the most part, been replaced by individual desks. Desks have been spaced three feet apart within the classrooms. Secondary cafeterias have been created um, in order to allow for the capacity in the old fitness center behind the cafeteria and the middle school library as to accommodate the six feet of distancing during lunch periods. Where possible, classroom seating charts will be created in a checkerboard format as to allow for incidental eating and or schedule mass breaks between our A through L and M through Z pods, thus allowing that six feet of distance between students during these occasional activities. So for instance, all the ALs could eat their breakfast in this particular classroom, uh, while the M through Zs keep their masks on, and then um, they change. Um, same thing during the day if, if a mask break is, is, need, is needed uh, within a classroom. Teaching and learning really consistent with what we started with in September uh, with three key tenants, social emotional support, instructional support, and content delivery. Specifically with social emotional support, there will be time um, allowed for our first week back uh, next week uh, to allow the students to acclimate themselves with their new classmates and the new capacity levels. This is probably the most important piece of the reopening plan with bringing students back five days a week for in-person instruction is the transportation. In order to reduce the density of students on buses, the district has encouraged parents to transport their children to and from school. About 40% will need busing a full five days a week, 27% will be dropped off and picked up five days a week, and 16%
will have a variety of busing and drop off and pick up. The district will seat students from the rear of the bus forward to limit students from walking past each other. And then once that's established, they will be assigned that specific seat for both the AM and PM routes. The bus driver will confirm with the student that they are symptom free before entering the bus. When possible, and to reduce the density of students on buses, no more than one student will be assigned to each seat, and students in the same household may sit together two to three a seat. Rival and dismissal. We, we will continue not to host an early morning drop-off due to the number of students in a shared space, and the building will not open until 725. Parents are not to drop their students off prior to 725 and or arrive earlier in the parking lot prior to their designated times. The letters are based on your youngest child's last name. Parent drop-off in the morning will be two shifts at 725 for the A through L and at 735 for M through Z and will continue to be at the front entrances of the buildings like they have been since September. But those split times are crucial to limit the amount of congestion in that parking lot. Parent pickup in the afternoon will be also in two shifts at 210 for A through L's and 220 for M through Z's. In order to reduce, further reduce congestion, walkers and student drivers will be dismissed at 2.05 p.m. For student drivers, um, updated senior parking passes will be handed out during your social studies classes, um, I believe starting within the next uh, day or two. Vehicle flow and logistics were considered to accommodate anticipated increase in parent transports. Due to traffic and safety hazards, all traffic will still be limited to buses, deliveries, and designated staff on the service road. All other traffic will be directed to utilize transit road to enter and exit the campus. School buses will unload and load in the back of the school building. Students must report directly to their locker and then to their classroom upon arrival. If parents are signing out at a time other than arrival or dismissal, the procedure will take place in the health office or the main office based on the purpose and in most events needs to be prior to 1.30 p.m. to avoid the traffic congestion. Drop off of items to students will be limited to emergency reasons. Visitors will only be permitted in the building for essential business. Again, uh, this is the same uh, pick up and drop off map that we used back in September with the drop off for the high school being uh, right in that front parent loop uh, by the front of the building and the same thing for the middle school in the parent drop-off loop. We need to maintain um, those drop-offs to stay consistent. And the buses will drop off in the back and that's why we um, are not allowing other traffic to be back. For drop-off, please do not drop off, uh, please do not arrive again prior to your designated time, 725 or 735. Um, there cannot be any standing traffic on Transit Road and you may be asked by police patrols to circle around the block if there's no capacity for you to enter the parking lot. Please always follow the direction of the traffic control personnel. This is critical. They all have vests on and usually have a flashlight line, an orange flashlight line. Please pay attention and listen to their direction. There will be no stopping at the front entrance of the building when there is room further ahead in the drop-off loop because that will back up all the traffic. If that happens, traffic control personnel will advise you to move ahead. Parents must stay in their car, and once the children are out of the car, you need to pull away safely, but promptly. For pickup, please do not arrive prior to your designated time, 2.10 or 2.20. Please always follow, again, the direction of the traffic control personnel. And again, there will be no stopping at the front entrance of the building, where there is room further ahead in the drop-off loop. You'll be told to move ahead. Rival and dismissal, the drop-off and pick-up process is critical to our returning to five days a week of in-person learning. It will require patience and flexibility for it to work. Based on flow, congestion, and safety, we may need to adjust our times in the future. For instance, we may need to adjust morning drop-off from 725 and 735 to 725 and 745, and pick up from 2.10 p.m. To, and 2.20 p.m. to 2 p.m. and 2.20 p.m. It all depends on how um, uh, the congestion flows and if there are any safety concerns. Um, so we need everyone's cooperation in moving forward with this so that we don't have to eat into our instructional time, which is very precious with only 16 days remaining in school. 
Some of the frequently asked questions that we've, we've had, again, uh, if your question is, isn't answered in this presentation um, or you need uh, further clarification, please go to the thought exchange and um, place that thought in there. I will um, review those and update our FAQ and put it up on our website by Friday. One of the questions is if families decide to send their children to school and then change their minds, can they easily switch to remote learning, vice versa, if families decide to remote learn, can they easily switch to in-person instruction? Parents may switch between the option of in-person instruction to remote learning, but not necessarily from remote learning back to in-person. The commitment for remote learning is for the rest of the school year. This is due to staffing and planning needs. Specific teachers are assigned to remote learning sections and we may not have the space uh, in the in-person classrooms to add back students with the distancing allowed. And this will be determined on a case-by-case -case basis. If school is forced to close and resumes in full remote learning, will teachers be expected to provide consistent instruction just like in in-person learning? Yes, learning course content will continue at home following a similar sequence of timeline as in school for most courses. Some instruction may be broken into small group work Given the developmental level of students, instruction will be monitored. Will teachers be taking attendance when students are remote learning? Yes, we have been all year. Um, the New York State uh, Education Department guidance requires that attendance be taken daily. What if there are positive cases within a classroom or school? This will be a significant risk as we come back to five days a week of in-person learning. Since our students will be uh, three feet apart rather than six feet apart, the Erie County Department of Health contact tracers may quarantine an entire classroom. If there are nine or more cases within the building, they uh, could close the building for 10 days at a time, just like they did our middle school prior to spring recess. Our students would then le learn remotely from that period of time. What we have learned since we've been five days a week uh, back in session, three feet apart at Cuba, is the contact tracers have only been interested when there's an infected student of the students that are within six feet for more than 10 minutes of that particular student to be contact traced and then quarantined. So it's been very, very few instances. Uh, and we believe that will be the case uh, here in the middle school and high school as well. How often uh, will the desk and other objects be cleaned? This is another piece of the regulations that got changed from the CDC. High touch services now should be cleaned at least once a day when no people with confirmed or suspected COVID-19 are known to have been in a space. Cleaning once a day is usually enough to sufficiently remove virus that may be on surfaces and help maintain a healthy facility. If you remember, we were deep cleaning on a regular basis. We no longer need to do that. Again, if you have any additional questions or clarifying questions, um, please uh, submit them in the thought exchange and they will get reviewed and our FAQ will get updated. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank you. Thank you for your continued feedback throughout this school year as we uh, developed our reopening plans along the way. We are very excited about having our students back on Monday. We are so looking forward, it, forward to it. We wish it could have, could have happened a lot earlier, but we will take every day that we possibly can. Thank you, and have a good night.